Hi there, this is Roderick from Toy Masters Video Magazine. I'm here at the Ekback Convention, still at Temple University in Philadelphia. I'm here with artist, creator, illustrator, <laughs> guy I really can draw on there, I'll tell y'all right now. Machindo. <laughs> So yeah. how are you doing? I'm doing good, brother. I'm doing good. It was a really good show. Uh, it's kind of winding down now. Um, it was kind of busy. I'm losing track of time. But it's winding down a little. And I think people really enjoy themselves. They do every year. Okay. I know this is uh, seventh year. It's my first time here. Oh, really? Yeah. Welcome. Thank you. Now, what is it that you do and everything? Have you worked for any combo companies? Or are you... Hold on, people. Excuse us. Okay, we're back. Uh, we just had a pause there for a moment for that announcement. Now, um, as I said, have you ever worked for any combo companies like Marvel, DC, Image, any one of those guys? Uh, Dark actually, Horse? Um, I had some really interesting comic book um, experiences. Um, I did work for DC Comics. I did a Nightwing story in a Batman Chronicles. It was Batman Chronicles number 20. And I did a fill-in Nightwing story. But I also did an Impulse. Uh, I think it was number, I think it was number 52 for Impulse. Now, the strangeness of, of my comic book story experience, or my comic book experience, is the fact that Neil Adams saw me at a convention. This was some years ago. And he actually hired me on the spot. However, I was three pages shy of completing a megalith story. And that's when Neil Adams went out of business. Ooh. So, I went from there, and I went to Defiant, and guess what happened? Went out of business. Defiant went out of business. Now, I went to Broadway Comics, and guess what happened? Went out of business. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, and there was one more in there. Um, the tall, lanky, uh, Caucasian guy who used to work for Marvel. Uh, what is his name? Uh, oh man! And I, I actually went to his company. He went out of business as well. <laughs> so it was really interesting, and I, I felt it. It kind of wasn't my calling, you know, because Milestone passed me over. Uh, Dennis Cohn would not hire me for whatever reason. You know, he uh, he wouldn't hire me. He wouldn't touch me. Because the embarrassing thing was that he asked me to do sample pages four times. On the fourth time, I said, no thanks, because you're either going to hire me or you're not. What about Marvel um, and DC? Marvel's been interesting. I did some poster stuff for Marvel that didn't get published, and that was it. Because strange enough, as good as my work is, I haven't gotten the callbacks. A lot of independent stuff, though. And I did do some work for Aenea Comics when they were when they were present. I actually did some sequentials, but that was a bit short-lived like they were. <laughs> <laughs> no insult, man. <laughs> man. You hear a lot of short-lived doggone places, man. That's true. That's true. That's true. And I don't know why that when I was with DC, or when I worked with DC, that I didn't, I wasn't a keeper. Because I did two books, or, or both projects that I had, I did them simultaneously, and I did them on time. And I would have thought that that show of, of, of uh, concentration and professionalism would get me rehired, and it did not. What about Image? Um, nothing from Image, you know, um, couldn't really get a response from them at the shows because of the, how people, you know, mob them at shows. And the process of sending work in is a slow process. And my work didn't really garner much. Okay. So, I mean, I, I'm really a, a freelance illustrator. A lot of the, a lot of the work I've done mostly over the years is painting. You know, uh, I've done a lot of book covers. I've done like 50 book covers or so. Um, and I've done some traveling, so I've done work in Korea, I've done work in New Zealand, uh, I used to live in Hawaii, so I've done a lot of work there. Um, from a born and raised in New York City, so I mean, I've seen what part? store signs, Brooklyn. What part? Uh, all over Brooklyn. I've lived in just about every neighborhood. Okay. You know, from Fort Greene to Bedford. I was, I grew up in Bedford Stuyvesant. Oh, I'm the same. Yeah. Yeah. Ralph Avenue. Ah, uh, Skillman. Oh, okay. Okay. Right, you went on the other side of Brooklyn. Yeah, I'm on yeah, Lafayette, yeah, DeKalb, yeah, by there, yeah, by, uh... Yeah, downtown hmm. Brooklyn. Lafayette Gardens, you know what? <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah, 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 indeed, indeed. So, um, what I'm intent on doing now is doing my own work. 
and self-publishing. And I think that's going to be, that's going to work out much better. So talking about self-publishing, what are some of the characters you have here that you want to self-publish? Um, well, actually, that I'm in the process. I actually do not have, well, you know what? I do have a book out of work that I've done, but that's still in tandem with someone else. Okay. That's still someone else's character, even though I helped to create the character. Yeah. Right? But now something that Mishindo created, Mishindo wrote, Mishindo published, is still on the in in the works. Okay. What about the work you have here? Is this all yours right here? Yes, it is. Um, these two pieces here, uh, now the characters I created, however, it's for someone who hired me and he created or, or wrote a children's book called September Moon. Okay. So he commissioned me to do the covers for him. Um, this is a character I created that has yet to see his own book, which is a character called I Am King. Well, it's a book called I Am King. This is something that I'm going to work a story on as well. And that character's name is Anikulako. And it's a name that means he has death in his pocket. Now, all these are black characters that you're drawing right here? Yes. Mm -hmm. Would you come up with the name for... Uh... I'm sorry? Would you come up with a name for this one? Um, fellow Ku uh, fellow Kuti, oh, yeah? who is a, uh, an African musician, and that's his name. And when I found out what it meant, right. I was like, that's a superhero's name. Yeah, 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 <laughs> You know what exactly. I mean? So, yeah. I associated it with this guy, because somebody who is so either tough or so vigorous right. or so ruthless that he has death in his pocket, right. he's got to be a bad yeah, man. Be a bad man. You know? right. Yeah, it's true. So, yeah, it, was, it, was, it inspired me to create the that fist, The fist, the Oh, man, come on. Now, the costume and everything, is it is based off of African culture? Um, very loosely. Very loosely. You know, it's not a specific African pattern. You know, and that's because he's kind of futuristic. Right. Okay. You know, so he's not in our contemporary setting. What about the handle of the blade? Um, it, it has a cultural meaning because of the material. It's sort of like a jade material. Jade and gold. And there's a special metal that they mine on this planet that when it's, when it's constructed, it has a, a purplish gleam to it. 